Ethiopia is a special place in the world. It's actually really lush and green and beautiful. It is a very beautiful country, but the people here are suffering from a devastating disease. It's not a pretty condition. We've never seen anything like this anywhere else, honestly. It's shocking. I mean, you can hear about it and you can talk about it, but seeing it um, is a whole new experience. You know, the situation is kind of like people have fully embraced and accepted that things aren't going to change. It's one of the places that's in most need of hope. This is our first time in Ethiopia. We're always excited to go into a new country because that means we're expanding our mission and our work. Tani and I have our hands full up north trying to take care of so many patients that need hearing help. We split off part of our team to send down south because we've heard about a condition there called mossy foot and we want to see what we can do to help this cause of treating this condition while we're helping with hearing. We're here in Soto, Ethiopia. We're partnering with the Mossy Foot Foundation. And you know, I don't know much about the work of this organization, except it helps prevent this disease of Mossy Foot. Hey, oh, it's hi. good to see you. So glad you could come to Mossy Foot. We're Thank very you for happy inviting to have us. We're happy here. to be here. There's so much for you to see. Set <laughs> Mossy Foot disease is caused by volcanic glass that penetrates through the pores in their feet, gets into the lymphatic system. And in Soto, that's especially significant because about 80% of the people here are farmers. So many of them have been barefoot in the soil. And about one in 13 develops an inflammation. They're the ones who get the disease. There's also a genetic predisposition. So there is a 75% more likelihood of getting mossy foot disease if they are from a family that has it. So if I put one dot in my hand, there'd be 5,000 particles of volcanic glass in that one little dot. Wow. It's just all through the soil. It can be eradicated through people wearing shoes. We have a lot of brand new patients today, and their feet are really bad, so be prepared for that. Mossy foot, basically, it is a easily preventable disease, but most people can't afford shoes and they just don't have the education here to understand. In the beginning, people's feet swell and itch, and then they get bigger and bigger. Sometimes they have keloids all over. They become very disfigured. And it smells bad. You can smell the bacteria from it. They're social outcasts. Yeah. And there's a lot of superstition, but we educate them here so that they know they what causes it. Treatment is very simple. Mm -hmm. We're just washing the feet real well with okay. soap and water and then soaking in a diluted bleach solution every day. Right. And then Whitfield ointment, which is an antifungal ointment, and he teaches them oh, right. help. Identify the sun. Okay. What's going on? Um, I feel like I'm in a faint. I think it's just from standing in the heat. But... All right. Okay. Huh? There's somewhere you can sit down and. All right, I'll be back. Seeing Mossy Foot for the first time is extremely shocking. You know, it's hard to, to not be a little squeamish. I don't know, I'm kind of nervous to do that, because I don't want to hurt her. Just gently? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. You know, this is the worst part right here. Yeah, yeah. 
going to sit in the shade for a second, but I think I'm all good. Are you up to washing feet? This really is meaningful for you to help out mm -hmm. because these are people that have been discriminated against that nobody wanted to have anything to do with. The stigma, the discrimination from having mossy foot disease is really terrible. They've been abandoned by their families. Some of them have been locked up in the home. You know what this is? If somebody see from family like this, mm -hmm. it is in trouble to get married from that family. They thought it, it may transfer, but it is not. It is a shame in our country. Mm -hmm. People feel like it is uncurable, and it is from God. We have teaching program. They teach every day about this. It is not curse. We can treat it. Andreas. Hello. Andreas. Salam. Steven Getakis. Andreas. My name is Andreas. I am 16 years old. After I was sick for three years, I can't work and things are just complicated for me. When I was a child, my muscle foot started, but it was not this big. I try to care for my wound, but can't because I just poor person. Uh, my mother died when I was a child. My father was sick with muscle foot, and then after a while, he just died without any treatment. So nobody cared for me. I am outcast already, so mostly I spend my time at the house. I can't go there, here. Friends and neighbors won't talk with me, so I can't communicate with society very well. He says, I cry. I tear, tear come out of my eye and I cry. And I feel very sad when they outcast me. Yeah. So how far does he have to walk here? Two hours. Two hours to walk. The communities here are so spread out and they have no means of traveling and they don't have cars and their feet are their only ways of getting around. And if those feet are diseased, then they can't walk, then they can't go anywhere. And, and you know, and it's very much like being a prisoner in their own home. Does he ever think he'll have a normal foot again? If God says so, my feet will get better. He keeps having you repeat and he can't hear it. Why is he? Zara Zara Nuna Hasa Isasa. I see Hasa Isasa. I tell you, I see you. I tell you, I see the really. Both ears, they can hear, but they hear sl slow. Very slow. slow. Little bit. You know, can you let him know that that's what we do well as we do hearing aids? Does he want help? Yeah. Thank you, he said. Thank you, he said. All right. We will see you soon then. You know, one of the things we can do is we can help him with his hearing, and, you know, and then maybe try to build his confidence up. Where are we headed now? We're going to the Mosifut headquarters, where shoes are made for people affected with Mosifut. Uh, lots of most foot patients cannot fit uh, normal size shoes, so we have to make big size shoes. This is where the magic happens, huh? Yeah. This part is the beginning stage. They draw the sketches and the zine. From this stage, these are tires cut into sizes okay. for patients whose feet are That's big. That's what he's doing. After they prepare the leather, they put yeah. it into this form. And then, after it is glued, they bring it to the sewing side here. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into one shoe. Yeah, that's how hard it is work. Yeah. They do this for the whole day. Then, one mostly foot patient gets benefit from their hard work. Yeah. Have a seat, and uh, you okay. can try. Okay, I will attempt my best. <laughs> Bad job, aren't I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. <laughs> I am horrible at making shoes. Well, they turn out about 20 to 25 shoes a day, and I would maybe get out two.
So how much does it cost to actually make a shoe? From 250 bir up to 300 bir. Burr? Make one, oh, really? one, so one shoe. 300 burr is... 26 or 7 dollars. 26 or 7 dollars per shoe? Yeah, for one shoe, yeah. How do the people afford yes. that here? The most put project offers these shoes for 10 bir only. So if they cost so... 26 dollars to make, why, why sell them for a dollar? I mean, why not just give them away? The mission is to make everybody well. Right. But they have to play their part. If they get for free, they will not be careful. So by paying a dollar or 10 burr, yes. then they feel like they own the shoes and they'll wear them? They will feel ownership. Done. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mossy Foot Project has it right because they have a program of self-help assistance where they get self-help loans to start their own businesses. Hi. This is Mubarad. After treatment, many people need income for themselves. Still now there is no job for them. So we just plan to help these people uh, different kind of skill, like hairdressing, barbering, carpentering, and microcredit. Concern, I mean, ah, sure, our priorities for women. Mm. They are active mm -hmm. with their job, mm -hmm. and then also they are honest. Mm. So women are a good example for the man. So what is yeah, she? She got a 700 per now, okay. just for making the jar bread. And with 700, that's enough to buy everything you need, all the yeah, supplies. For, it is initial. She is doing well. Mm -hmm. We could add some more okay. money for her. To be able to give someone their life back fully, not just their physical capabilities, or with the equivalent of a $50 loan to start a business so they can take care of their family, I think that was the most impressive part for me, is that it goes way beyond just mossy foot, the condition. Her husband is sick. She and also she has two kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's now she's thinking back when she was very sick, no friend beside her like this. All those things are making her amazed. Today, I need to purchase things. Good. Okay. Good. I want to see the whole process. This is step. This is very expensive. If she used for her business, mm -hmm. only them, her price is very high. So for today, she tried with uh, tape and some maize mm -hmm. for her better price. So let's go to shop now. Okay. What are you feeling for? She, there is a kind of a tape. She There's got, different kinds? Yeah. And some are better than others? Yeah. Okay. Does she like this one? It's incredible to watch Birkenesh really step up and start haggling very aggressively with pretty much every vendor. It took me by surprise to see that she was such a strong businesswoman. The most impressive thing about the Mossy Foot Project is that they started off kind of treating just a disease, but there were so many other aspects of a person's life that they felt that they had a calling to fix. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy. I'm Pastor Zaude and I work as a social and spiritual worker in the Mossy Food Project. We saw there uh, are lots of widows who are abandoned and they are stigmatized 
because of the most food illness. And as a result of that, we began the widow's house program. <laughs> Praise be to God. I'm so happy that you came to work on my house. I'm excited to help. Termites have eaten down oh, wow. everything, so it's collapsing. And so this is where she cooks? Is this everything? This is the only room that they have, and the place where she cooks, the place where she also sleeps. How many people live in here? She has two grandchildren mm -hmm. who are living with her. So in total, the three of them are living in this hut. And when it rains, does the water come through? Or? She says it is like living outside. Okay. Everything really? just leaks. The she even remembers. The hyena was, you know, looking around. She the says- The is coming in here? Yes, the hyena came here and, you know, because of the hole. Right. I myself did not understand that people come like this and they stand beside me. Wow. This is a great day for me. <laughs> but people live like this every single day all over the world, and it just makes you like appreciate what you do have in life. I can't imagine what Oiza must feel like. Um, I hope that in some way we can help her and have like a normal life again. It's not easy work to get a whole community to come out here. We work with our social workers who know the community very well. They inform us that the most put the widow's house is in a bad shape. The, the community brought the wood? Yes. The women around the widow, uh -huh. they also brought some meal to share with the people who are working on it. We are giving them message that this uh, illness is not contagious. Right now it's uh, the rainy season and everyone's planting, so for them to be out here is a pretty big deal because they have their own business to attend to. Yeah. I would say this is healing the wounds of most of the widows. It is bringing reconciliation and understanding and oneness between the community and the widows. Today we are celebrating uh, that this house is completed. <laughs> no more rain will leak. It's warm. <laughs> Uh, she's not, I'm not crying, crying because I'm sad, but I'm crying because I'm so much joyful. You know, when I first signed up to do this, I, I gave up everything, like I, a good job that I loved, but I can honestly say that it's been worth it. We're happy we could help. <laughs> it's a life-changing experience for me. This woman, she has never got the shoe before. Every week, Daniel provides shoes and medicine for people in need who can't walk to the clinic. So this man, yeah, uh, Atomegi, so his feet is the worst case uh, I have ever seen. Oh, yeah. He is very neglected and outcasted. So we just are going to give him the bleach, the okay. medicine. Hello? Maggie, so I'm a Steven. Hi, Steven. How are you? You try not to look and you try not to stare because these people are constantly shunned by society. And I, I wanted to focus in on who he is and not just get to know his disease. Should we sit here? How long have you had mossy foot? Mm -hmm. 
So do bad that I probably won't have been paid to do the internal salvo malu. So I could not afford to go to Sodo every day, every time to get him uh, my medicine. It got even worse and worse. Hey, this is very bad. It has to be removed by surgery. Tasho important it. Osi mo tabe tasabe to pen. Helai tasa pezal ademik hani gele gabe geleba. Unte na machazia kayo ap me da kama sancha ya te volka volkiwa sancha ya te. Osi wo to malada isi pete yes ta yes ta. Ai ba ai bende ta oba. Awan engade oteni. Engade kote ai ba asa ubezeri chisha ezine gize. Baka unte na even na bike. How long has it been since he's left this area? Azarzan, this is a compound I live in. 20 years? 20 years? He hasn't left this area in 20 years? Yes. I notice, is he shaking? Is, he, is it because he's cold? Or is it affecting other parts of his body? I want to introduce you to my children. I would love to meet them. Sarta. Hello. Hello. Hey, Ganne, ka hai. Eh, mere, mere tu. Mere tu. Eh, mesirach. Hello. Eh, pukuro. Metasabi. Metasabi. Now, are are you guys aware of how Masi foot is caused? Kedi sa kya harge aao inte aawa gamal harge. Wana kedi sa kana dandya ko erakati. He's telling them now. Yeah. They don't know. I think that was the biggest shock with Magiso is that he has the worst case of mossy foot that anyone has ever seen, and his five children have no idea how their father got the disease. So we should try to get shoes for everyone. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. I will see you again. You know, for me in this journey and what Bill has taught me in doing what we do with the foundation is, you know, we're about helping people. And listening to Megiso's story, I have to find some way to help him. received a small loan to start an Indira bread making business. She bought a lot of different things and so I'm curious to see her progress. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> As it turns out, Birkinesh is the only person in her family is strong enough to work, and they have nothing. You know, she has to watch her children go hungry and her husband suffer. You know, Birkinesh could save her husband's life with this business. She had experience from her mother, because when her mother was selling in Jira, she had practiced that with her. Try a small one. Okay. So I don't waste too much of it. Ah, don't so dead. Don't so got you. Whoops. <laughs> yes. Talamai, injera ukara lame tanat illa duke te da. Lama ta ke ta lama no tanata dicha no ta shaya or de samay. So I just asking her, is her customers are here or not? And she said, yeah, they are not here now, she said. I know that Birkinesh had a really clear idea of who she thought her clients would be, but I was unsure about how everything was going to go. There weren't as many people as I expected, and because she had mossy foot, I started to wonder if anyone was actually going to buy any of her product.
Birkenesh had a projection of, you know, who her clients would be, and it's just not happening. And we kind of sat there for a little while, and I was uneasy. And then finally, one person came over. And then all of a sudden, all these people finally showed up. It's amazing to think that this is a woman that people didn't even want to be near or speak to because she had mossy foot. And today, they are rushing up to buy a product that she made with her own hands. So it's already gone now. That's it? The, the it's all done? So her first business day is a success. I get Congratulations. I think that seeing the world is about intimacy, being completely open to the people that walk into your life. Well, thank you for taking the time to teach me and to show me and to allow me to be a part of this process. I have endless amounts of respect for her. She's paving the way for her family and being a strong female role model for her entire community. And it's crazy <laughs> to see just how much Birkenesh has enriched my life. Tell her I said good luck. And I hope her NGO business helps her make her family very happy and healthy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how are you? I've heard a lot about Bill and Tanny. I think there's a similarity between Starkey and Mossy Foot because both the people with Mossy Foot disease and people that don't have hearing become isolated from community. Yeah. This was the mission compound, mm -hmm. and then across here, that was the old hospital where my dad worked so many years. He was the only doctor there for over a million people. I guess he yeah. was busy. Huh? He was very busy. My dad, Dr. Nathan Barlow, was a missionary doctor here for many years. He saw some people with mossy foot during the time he was treating everything else, but didn't have the time just to focus on one disease. So 20 years later, they came back when my dad was 85. In 1997, he started the Mossy Foot Project. Okay. Why did you come over and meet some of the okay. people? Would love to. I can see that Sharon is dedicated to following the path of her father to help with this disease. Hi because her father made progress for some people here and they shouldn't be abandoned. You have something wrong here. I mean, uh -huh. this is, you know, it's painful. You know, it's preventing people from Quality of the life. mobility of they want, but there's something right. And the right, really right thing is that there's someone who cares about them. Mm -hmm. Look at their faces. And when you read them, because they smile. now they're smiling, yeah. they're happy right. because someone really cares about them. What a difference that makes. Yes. And I just hope to be a uh, an example like Sharon's father, and together we'll make a better world. <laughs> now that my mom and Bill are here, I'm anxious for them to meet Andreas, and I hope they can help him. Hey, good to see you. you this, is, this is Daniel, and this is Andreas. He's a mossy foot patient. Andreas has had mossy foot for about four years now. Sean from school and friends and family, and he's been hard of hearing for a few years now. So I thought you guys could help him. Sure, I'll take a look with the ear lights. Uh... Here, go over here. Unlike mossy foot, hearing loss is invisible. It can be very painful. There's going to be a hearing loss in both ears, and there's still infection in the middle ear. This guy needs to be treated for that. You're isolated from your family and friends. You can't share life. It's particularly difficult. I'll take care of this, and I want to get him some ampicillin or something. We see a lot of hearing loss in impoverished areas like Ethiopia because they don't have the same basic access to health care that we have in the U.S. Okay. Let's just take a look here. How about now? Hey! Look, look. Yes, I can hear his thing. 
He's a big, loud dog. He wants more. Salt in the eye. Opens up the world to them. It was like an aha moment for Andreas. Like, this is really happening. This man really cares about me. I am going to get better. Now he's good. I like it. He likes good. There's always been things wrong in the world. There always will be. They, the people need to know that at least you're on their side. Uh, now I can hear, and I'm feeling very happy. I want to thank God as well. The most important thing I want is to get healthy, get fine. When he turned from Paris to second grade, mm -hmm. most of it started. Classmates uh, neglected him, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. insulted him. Oh, oh honey. honey. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. Oh, My neighbors, they spit on me, and they looked him in a bad eye. Mm -hmm. oh. How long would a condition like this take to become normal? More than one year. One More year? More than one year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to just stay right with it and keep those shoes on. So this is affecting all the way up, up, up to, to here? Up to here, he has problem inside his all the way uh, urinating area. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want Bill in there? Bill, yeah. they want you to come in. Yeah, sure. OK. Ay, ay, ay. This originally came from the mossy foot up the leg? It, this happened affected by the mossy foot the same way. He says it's spreading all over. Ay. That's too bad. Oh on the inside of his right thigh. The tumor was growing and it was very deformed and it looked really bad. Andreas asked for me to look at him because he trusted me. Because he knew that I wasn't going to spit on him or, or not care. He knew I would care and he, he was looking for help. He was looking for someone that would care about him. He knew he needed help. Okay. What I think I need to do is, uh, if there's a doctor that you think is uh, competent, mm -hmm. we would take him to the doctor, yeah, and then I will pay for it if he has some treatment he needs. Okay. okay. You'd have to see what I saw. It's not. It's not good. So. You know, we just hope that this tumor is uh, not a malignant. Uh, really aggressive tumor. To have a million dollar smile like that, you know, you're hurting like that, that's pretty good. We hope that this procedure is going to save his life. Giso definitely is the worst case of mossy foot that anybody's ever seen. He's trying to support five young kids, you know, and, and he has no way of doing that. So I wanted to help him. Megiso. Hey, Megiso. Hey, Megiso. How are you? Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. I came back, I brought um, shoes for your kids. <laughs> Thank you very much, Aka. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Do we want to sit? Ah. Um, you know, I was honored to meet you and hear your stories and see how proud you were. And can you let him know that I've been talking to Sharon at Mossy Foot? And um, she's helped me find a surgeon that can take care of your feet. And I, I will pay for the surgery and the care. <laughs> now you can go walk around and leave your home and go back to town and provide for your family. God bless you very much. I have never been happier before like this, and I am very happy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So you get better. Better. He got very emotional when I told him I was going to give him the surgery. Am I going to be that lucky? Was that lucky person going to be me? I'm very happy. I'll tell him I have two children, and I can't imagine not being able to play with them and take them out to show them what I've learned. He's lived this way for 20 years, and it got me thinking about the lack of understanding what this problem is and how you prevent it. 
And that's with education. These might work for you. That's how you can really start to curb this disease. It matches your shirt. Good, 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 good. If someone had done that for Magiso, he would have the last 20 years of his life back. He's a, he's a good man and a good father. You're a good person. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. is sort of the culmination of all of our projects because we'll be distributing shoes, but we'll also be uh, putting our little educational program into action. Can you let them know we're gonna clean their feet and then we're gonna let them dry and then we're gonna give them shoes. Does she know anybody that has mossy feet? Uh, yes. Do you know to wear shoes? The whole goal of today was to hand out a, a little over 300 pairs of shoes to the children of this area and help educate them on how they can prevent this problem, which is one of the biggest challenges here because their illiteracy rate is so high in this area. So by providing the pamphlet that can educate these kids through pictures, we can make it simple enough to get the message across. Okay. If you play or walk in the dirt mm -hmm. without shoes, you get mossy foot. Starkey and mossy foot are both really passionate about helping out impoverished people to give them the tools that are necessary to be able to cope with life and be successful. Like this. Ba -ba -ba. Right there, he likes it. Hey, perfect. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Andreas has the very advanced stage of mossy foot, but his physical being just changed once we got those hearing aids in and he just lit up. Okay, they go. Take that one. Mm -hmm. Take it off. And then see, this one is this year, this one is this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just push and then push. Ba, 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 ba. Better? Good. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's try this one. <laughs> Bill, you have a you have a, an official helper. Hey, you got a shirt for him too. <laughs> this hey, is it. Gosh. You bet. <laughs> so he's going to hand out the medals. Good. There won't be long. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, it's good. Ba, ba, ba. Right there. Okay, doctor. Oh, uh, my assistant is ready with the medals. Okay. He likes it. Okay, he's ready. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I'll ever forget Andreas' smile. I think that's why I, <laughs> I care about Andreas, because I've never seen anyone that's that bad. That has a smile on their face. We got a chance, yes. and the best is yet to come. I've never in my life's worst minute have had any experience like what this guy lives with every minute of every day. <clears throat> it's special. It's what we can do in a yeah. couple of days. It's really great. I think the trip to Ethiopia was a success. You know, we branched outside our comfort zone to learn more about Mossy Foot and, 
And more importantly, you know, I'm going to remember the people. McGee, so Andreas and... Uh, you know, just how I was able to help. It's a great example of the lesson that the father taught of respect for life and caring. And now we see uh, her carrying this mission forward, and we hope to teach that lesson to others so we can have a much larger impact on the world. Tasun, Tara, Bonk, Masha, Shah, this is Galatis, 